Hi there movie fans and welcome to another edition of Movies. Today we've accepted an assignment to review Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 released in cinemas around the world in July 2023. This is the movie event of the summer, an absolute stunner living up to all the expectations you might have had about Tom Cruise's latest effort to save cinema after the success of last year's Top Gun Maverick. Like him or not, TC is box office gold and his ability to consistently deliver movies of this scale is staggering. Don't wait for the video release. This film is what cinemas were made for. It is a breathtaking movie experience. So go grab a ticket, get your popcorn and sit back and be entertained, often breathlessly, for 2 hours 50 minutes. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start with a few rudimentaries. The film is once again directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who helmed the three previous MIs and is currently wrapping up Dead Reckoning Part 2 by undertaking, we're told, quote, the biggest set piece of the film, which is massive and unlike anything we've done and, I think, unlike anything you've seen, end quote. For most directors, that sounds like bullshit. Here, given how fabled Cruz's stunt heroics have become, as well as McQuarrie's form over the three previous missions, it has the ring of truth, even as it is as hard to imagine their topping any of the signature stunts in part one. It stars, no surprise, Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, whose small rogue team of mission experts, including familiar sidekicks Benji, played by Simon Pegg, and Luther, played by Ving Rhames, are the go-to guys when impossible missions are needed to be undertaken. Making another appearance in part one is Rebecca Ferguson as Ethan Love Interest and occasional rival Ilsa Faust. Hayley Atwell, honing her own here as Grace, a thief who stumbles into the plot and becomes essential to it. Pom Clementif as hit girl Paris and Henry Cherney, brilliantly reprising his role in the very first MI as Agent Kittridge. Nods too to Carrie Elwes as the Director of National Intelligence, Shay Wiggum as Jasper Briggs, constantly thwarted in his efforts to take Hunt down, and Vanessa Kirby as daughter to Max, who you might recall was the arms dealer played by Vanessa Redgrave in the very first MI. Like all other missions, its film locales are extensive, with filming here taking place to stunning effect in Lisfjord, Norway, London, Abu Dhabi and Rome, although the producers were keen to assure moviegoers that no steps were damaged during a signature car chase on the ancient Piazza di Spagna. What you see as Cruz Atwell's little yellow Fiat and Paris's armoured police vehicle rolled down that iconic architectural showpiece in a shower of dust and debris is a recreation, specially built for the purpose. In fact, the technical know-how on display is incredible, with their commitment over the three years of filming MI Part 1 given full acknowledgement on the huge credit list at the end of the movie. Divided as it is between the various countries in which filming occurred. Staggering. What next? Oh yeah, the plot. Not that it matters much in a franchise that is more about big set pieces and character connections than plausible storyline. But part one follows the tried and tested here, with a MacGuffin, this time a, a key, or more accurately two halves of a key, that where matched unlock something or other, used, like the knock list or the rabbit's foot before it, to propel the action from one high stunt filming location to another. You know what to expect when you turn up at an MI event, but it's done so well, we all keep coming. The arch nemesis this time is not in fact human, well, not as such. It is an AI self-aware computer program bent on taking over the world and bending truth to its will, a bit like Donald Trump, but here realised in human cipher form through the appearance of Isai Morales as Gabriel, who some may recall played a similar menacing part as the Colombian drug lord in Ozark. But hey, well, you know Ethan's missions are all about action and stunts, and more stunts, filmed on an incredible scale and made the more jaw-dropping by their being undertaken with as little CGI as possible. The sequence involving Cruz's jump off a sheer Norwegian cliff edge on a motorbike before free-falling and then parachuting on a moving train has been well trailed, and rightly so, but without revealing too much, there were more signature pieces throughout the movie 
all as thrilling as the showpiece mentioned, including a 20 minute car chase through Rome that is in equal measure inventive, funny and breathtaking. An escape from falling railway carriages, correct, that's carriages, plural, one after another, that was the tautest, most gripping piece of cinema I've seen in a good while. That is, of course, the key to the success of the MI films. They rely on edge of seat thrills, heart in mouth action rather than on clever storyline or body counts. Such an interesting feature about these movies is their focus on escape or capture with the wish to avoid body bags never far from the IMF's mind. Although the faceless assassins hunt encounters in the desert at the beginning of the film may have something to say about that. In all, this is a superbly made and brilliantly paced movie, well worth the entrance fee. You've seen the trailer, this lives up to the hype and then some. Don't delay, go see it now on the big screen while you still can in all its glory. There is some talk that this year's Oscars may have a premium category of award dedicated to stunts and rightly so. Part 1 has already shown its credentials as frontrunner and would be my odds on favourite. And with Cruz vowing to make MIs into his 80s, I wouldn't bet against him picking up a bag full of more Oscars before his innings is done. Thank you for watching, we hope you can subscribe to our channel or comment on our reviews, we love to hear from you and we always respond. Otherwise, look forward to more movie reviews soon. This review will self-destruct in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.